I'm Roger. I'm Brian. I'm Jeff. I'm Patty. I'm Foggy. I'm Rosemary. I'm Matthew. I'm Judy. And we're all here tonight. Welcome to Punchlines. Punchlines, the show they said should be on breakfast television and then we can keep people confused for the whole day. <laughs> Punchlines, you know how to play it. We just simply ask you to remember what you heard and where you heard it. As usual, we'll be playing for some nice prizes, but the real object of the game is to have fun, because the folks in the studio are going to be playing, aren't you folks? Yeah. Of course you are. And we want you to play along with us at home. Now, you've met our punchliners, and I'd now like you to meet our two contestants. They are Marjorie Kay and Neil Campbell, over there. <laughs> now, I know Marjorie's a fine Yorkshire lass from Bradford. Right, Marjorie? Yes, fine. What do you do? I'm PA to the managing director of a chemical company. A PA? What's a PA? It's a posh secretary, really. A posh secretary. Love this. <laughs> fine, fine. And Neil, you're, you're a Scots lad. Hey? Yes. Edinburgh. Smash it. Fine. Enjoying it down here? Yes, very much, thanks. Terrific, terrific. What are you? Any hobbies or anything like that? I like playing board games. You like to play board games? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on swiftly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to help Neil and to help Marjorie play punchlines, we've invited two of our punchline pals. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome Suzanne Danielle and Roy Kinnear. <laughs> so, for a terrible moment then, I thought it was the cranky. <laughs> First time on Punchlines. This is true. So, looking forward to it? No. <laughs> well, there's a flying start. Lovely, Roy. You've got millions. No, yes. I'd <laughs> like to thank you for dressing for the occasion, Roy. It was nothing. I know. I can see that. Welcome, Roy. <laughs> this is my, uh, my I am a comedian jacket. Right. <laughs> Let's explain the rules of the game. Uh, punchlines is very simple. Our punchliners read out all their punchlines, and these are the answers to questions I will then put to our two teams. Okay, so far. So, so. Okay, <laughs> what we want them to do is to match up each individual punchline to each individual question. I'll give 10 points for every correct answer. The first team to 150 will be this week's punchline champion. And I'll tell you beforehand, one of the punchlines is a total red herring. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start game one. Punchliners, your punchlines, please. I've started, so I'll finish. Let's have an up and under. <laughs> I'm a qualified chicken sexer. <laughs> Shall I sing you a hymn? Would you like to swing on my creeper? <laughs> Lie back and think of England. <laughs> you hold it in your hand and it develops in 30 seconds. If it starts to hurt, just let me know. So, as you can see, another giant step forward for punchlines. Uh, Marjorie, you on the toss backstage before the show and you're going to go first, assisted by Roy, of course. Your first one. Tarzan looked at Jane. What did he say? One. You say number one. Tarzan said to Jane, Roger. <laughs> you hold it in your hand and it develops. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, Tarzan did not say that to Jane. <laughs> uh, the sound you hear is Edgar Rice Burroughs swinging in his grave. <laughs> okay. We go to, to Neil. Neil, first time in the game, first question for you. If asked for advice, Queen Victoria might well have said to Miss is Gladstone. <laughs> Miss Gladstone? No, 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 no. Uh, don't correct the quiz master, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Gladstone. Number eight. You say number eight, Judy. Queen if Victoria to Mrs. Gladstone. If it starts to hurt, let me know. <laughs> now, Roy, what do you think the Archbishop said to the actress? <laughs> well, this is it's a... not of my business. Just answer the question. Right. <laughs> number seven. You say number seven, and it's Matthew, Archbishop to the actress. Would you like to swing on my creeper? <laughs> 
I, I can't take much more of this. Uh, <laughs> Suzanne, first time for you. What did Magnus Magnuson say to the mastermind contestant? Magnus Magnuson. He said number five. He said number five. Fogwell. I'm a qualified chicken sexer. <laughs> I often wondered how Magnus Magnuson got the job. Right. Uh, here we go. Uh, back to you, Marjorie. Don't worry, because you haven't got any points. Don't worry about that, because they haven't got any either. Right. It's exciting, though. It, it, it is exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> of course, you see, Roy has had a very sheltered life. <laughs> more sheltered after this, I can yes, tell you. Right. The dentist smiled at his patient, Marjorie. What did he say? The dentist to his patient. Number eight. Number eight. Not quite sure, but guesses at eight and Judy. If it starts to hurt, let me know. There we go. First <laughs> you, you knew she was right, didn't you, Roy? Right? Of course not. Walk up. Walk up. I'm, I'm glad you think it's easy because now it's your turn. <laughs> the rugby captain turned to his standoff and he said, Rugby captain. Number five. You say number five, and it's it's Fogwell. Fogwell, the rugby captain to his standoff. Come on, Fogwell. Well, I'm a qualified chicken sexer. <laughs> <laughs> right, now, I think you might just get this, Neil, because you've been concentrating. I can see that. There's none of this foolishness like the other players. While demonstrating a Polaroid camera, the salesman said to the customer, um... Number four. You say number four, Patty. Shall I sing you a hymn? <laughs> the good news is, folks, we have now asked all the questions. Uh, and the bad news is we only have ten points out of the lot. <laughs> so we'll keep asking them until they get them right. Uh, we're back to Tarzan now. Tarzan, Marjorie. And he's looking at Jay, and he is still saying. Three. Three is Jeff. I've started, so I'll finish. <laughs> This time, because it's sort of progressing and programs might be slightly late this evening, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'm going to let you confer. Okay, uh, Queen Victoria, uh, if asked for advice, she might well have said to Mrs. Gladstone, Suzanne. I've got no idea. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you um, what, if the chicken sexer comes out again, I'm stopping the show. <laughs> number six. Number six. Queen Victoria to Mrs. Gladstone said. Let's have a nup. An under. <laughs> Roy, uh, a rescue operation is yes, needed. Uh, Magnus Magnuson said to the mastermind contestant, Magnus said? Said number three. You said number three is Jeff. I've started, so I'll finish. Yes, yeah. Enjoyed that? Of course it's easy. Yes, that's what the country needs, a portly show-off. Uh, <laughs> Marjorie, your side, 20 points and nil in the lead. The rugby captain turned to his standoff. What did he say? Number six. Number six. Let's have an up and under. Let's have an up and under indeed. Now we're going. He's got that confident smile on his face. Roy, well done. Oh, again. Oh, it is you again. Yes, yes. While demonstrating a Polaroid camera, the salesman said to the customer, you have to think, you know how Polaroid cameras work, don't you? Uh, and it developed in seconds. Second. 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 Number two. Number, no, number two. two. Number two is Brian, Polaroid camera, the salesman said to the customer, Lie back and think of England. <laughs> Neil, Neil, Tarzan, who is getting older by the minute, <laughs> looks at Jane and he says, Tarzan to Jane. Number seven. You say number seven, Matthew. What did Tarzan say to Jane? Would you like to swing on my creeper? I certainly did. <laughs> First ten points. Okay, Suzanne, I, I hesitate to say this to you because you are an actress. The, the Archbishop, what did he say to the actress? Um, like, like, lie back and two. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you don't go to church a lot then, do you? Not? <laughs> He said number two, Brian. Lie back and think of England. No, no, no. <laughs> Marjorie, Marjorie, while demonstrating a Polaroid camera, the salesman said to the customer. Is it number one? Number one, you say, Roger. You hold it in your hand and it develops in 30 seconds. Quite right. 
Queen Victoria, Mrs. Gladstone, what did she say? Roy? <laughs> uh, number eight. Said number eight. Judy? If it starts to hurt, let me know. <laughs> Neil, the Archbishop to the actress, what did, she, what did he say? Okay, number four. Them, so. Number four, Patty. Shall I sing you a hymn? There we go, ten points. <laughs> Five, 40 points to 20. Final question this round. Queen Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> Asked for advice, might well have said to Mrs. Gladstone, Suzanne. Num number eight. No, it's not number eight. You told me to say number eight. Of course eight. I did. <laughs> Queen Victoria to Mrs. Gladstone, Jeff. I've started, so I'll finish. <laughs> Marjorie is the final question, and one of you is going to have to answer it. Queen Victoria to Mrs. Gladstone. Must be number two. You say it must be number two, Briar. Lie back and think of things. Yes, correct. <laughs> 50 points in favour of Roy and Marjorie to 20, Neil and Sudan, which sometimes shows you that uh, cheats do prosper. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you, kid. Uh, who, uh, who had the red herring? I'm a qualified chicken sexer. Yes, correct. Well done. <laughs> OK, uh, end of the first round. Now, that didn't take long, did it? <laughs> And to uh, make it even more interesting, the second game, we're going to change the rules a little. This time, we do our little walkabout game. Oh, it's exciting, <laughs> this is, isn't it? It is exciting. <laughs> this is where the punchliners all give their punchlines, and then they change places. But the punchline remains in the same place. So if you're playing along with us at home, remember, same rules, what you heard and where you heard it. Remember those punchlines and their positions, OK? Punchliners, your punchlines, please. A nun's habit. A donkey jacket and willies. A G-string. <laughs> a kiss helmet. Perfume. A blue veil. A cricketer's protector. <laughs> a chastity belt. <laughs> All right, before you firmly implant them in your minds, let's do it quick. Punchliners, change places. <laughs> Yes, choreographed by Lionel Blair, as a matter of fact. OK, uh, let's go first this time. It's going to be Neil. Neil, 20 to 50, 30 points behind. Let's get back in the game. When asked what she wore in bed, the famous actress replied. And there's still a red herring there. Uh, number seven. You say number seven, Miss Patty. Famous actress in bed. A cricketer's protection. <laughs> <laughs> A Toreg tribesman of North Africa always wears. A what? A, a Toreg. A Toreg. <laughs> if you wish, but he's a tribesman from North Africa. What does he always wear? Number two. You're convinced it's number two, yeah, and it's Jeff. A pith helmet. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that kind of tribe. Uh, <laughs> Suzanne, a stripper, never appears on stage without. Oh. Number six. Number six, you say. Matthew. A chastity belt? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's Marjorie. Marjorie, I think you might get this. Jeff Boycott always goes into bat wearing... A, a number seven. A number seven is Patty. Oh, a cricketer's protect. Yes, well done. <laughs> Roy, a man on a building site, often wears... <laughs> this isn't a toe rag. No, no, this is not a rag. Different number one. Together. You say number one, Rosemary. Perfume. <laughs> Neil, Neil, I, I, sorry, were you chatting? Yes. Oh, you were conferring. That's all right. Uh, in that case, you'll know that a nun never appears in public without... Number four. You say number four. Bugwell. A blue veil? A blue <laughs> veil, no. Sorry. Now, in hot countries, an Englishman often wore... And it's Marjorie. In hot countries, an Englishman. What did he wear? Number two. You say number two, and it's Jeff. A pith helmet. A pith helmet is correct. Why? When asked what she wore in bed, the famous actress replied. 
Famous actress in bed. Are you talking to me? Yes. Um, <laughs> I was talking about the famous actress. The famous actress was replying in yes. bed. In bed. Uh, yes. And she yes. replied and she said, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, she's, she's number five. She wore in bed number five. Brian? Nun's habit. <laughs> Yours, wasn't it? Yeah. Suzanne, Suzanne, uh, the touring tribesman in North Africa always wears a number one. A number one is Rosemary. Perfume. <laughs> Marjorie, a stripper, never appears on stage without. Yeah, she's asking Roy because he knows a lot about that kind of thing. Of course you do. I'm only here to help you. <laughs> number eight. You say number eight, Roger. <laughs> donkey jacket and wellies. <laughs> This is how the questions actually come out. I think you might have a bit of a chance of getting this. A man on a building site uh, often uh, wears... Number eight. Number eight. Roger, tell him. A donkey jacket and wellies. <laughs> Suzanne, a nun never appears in public without... Five. A five. Confident five. Brian. A nun's habit. A nun's habit. Five. This famous actress asked what she wore in bed. What did she reply, Neil? Number one. Number one. Rosary. Perfume. Perfume, yeah. <laughs> 50 points to 70. Uh, the Toreg tribesman. North Africa. Where's Suzanne? Ah. Oh. Two or three. Two or three. <laughs> Would you like me to pick for you? Yes. <laughs> no, I can't do that. It's oh. not fair. You pick it. Go ahead. Um, two. Try it. Um, a pith helmet? <laughs> oh, shame. The same kind of thing. You know, something yeah. for the desert. Never mind. Uh, Roy, still with us? Yeah. A stripper yep. never appears on stage without. Sorry, once. Uh, 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 a skipper. A stripper. A stripper. A stripper. Uh, <laughs> never appears on stage without. Uh, 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 number, uh, no, no, uh, number well, they three. Won't give you number three. three. They won't give you a clue. They sit there looking impassive at you. Look at those faces. You say number three, Judy, the stripper, never appears without? A G-string. A G-string. Well done. One thing Roy Kinnear knows about is strippers. Uh, and it's Marjorie. Marjorie. Our final question this round, you're leading 80 to 50, and the Toreg Trisman. What does he wear? <sighs> Number four. You say four, and it's Fogwell. A blue veil. A blue veil is correct. That's right. That's what they wear. Who had, who had the red hair? Oh, it was me with my chastity belt. <laughs> yes. Sorry. And beautifully worn it was. OK, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the end of the first part. Uh, we'll take a break now while Roy Kinnear checks his pool coupons. <laughs> <laughs> if he draws her up, he won't be back for the second half. <laughs> Join us soon for some more punchlines. <laughs> Welcome back to Punchlines, or as Roy Kinnear has just described it, the thinking man's tis what. <laughs> we'll be playing now our third and final round to find which of our two contestants is going to be this week's Punchline champion. And this, this is where we change the rules all over again. This is where we don't actually ask our punchlines to read their punchlines out. We ask you to use your intuition, because the punchlines are all up there, okay? And this time there are no red herrings, so it's a little bit easier in that respect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's Neil to go, a little bit behind, 50 to 90, but this round we double up the points to 20 because it is a little more difficult. Okay, Neil, somewhere up there is the punchline to this. Tony Benn looked at Michael Foote and he said... Number eight. He said... I'm going to rub straw on your withers. <laughs> Breach of parliamentary privilege and no <laughs> point. Right. Roy, the Ayatollah Khomeini, looked at the Iranian lady and he said... Number two. Number two? Jeff. Shall I polish your woggle? <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne. <laughs> it gets worse, it gets worse. Frank Ifield looked at the Swiss girl and he said... Number six. Number six. Matthew. I'm glad you're wearing a veil. Oh, no shame. Never mind. Marjorie, the stable girl, went up to red rum 
What did she say? Number eight. Number eight. Roger. I'm going to rub straw on your withers. He certainly did. Yeah. Or you have to remember, even in this game, because all those are answers to the questions, okay? In the horror you film... That, you yes, you did get yes, that. You got that. <laughs> I just wonder why you look so vacant, that's all. Um... I'm sort of sitting next to someone intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> in horror film, Roy, Christopher Lee said to Peter Cushing... Number four. Number four, confident. I'm going to bite your neck. Easy as that. Here we go, Marjorie. After he'd rescued the swimmer, the lifeguard said to him... Number three. Number three is Judy. I want to be leader of the Labour Party. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, the Boy Scout, went up to the Scoutmaster and he said... Number two. Oh, confident. Number two. Sh Jeff. Shall I polish your woggle? Yes, of course. <laughs> You did well. 20 points there because Roy and Marjorie only need one more correct answer to go into the final. OK, here we go. Suzanne, we're depending upon you. The patient went to the psychiatrist. What did he say? Number one. You say number one. Rosemary. Will you teach me to yodel? <laughs> <laughs> OK, Roy. Tony Benn looked at Michael Foote. What did he say? Number three. You say number three, and it's Judy. I want to be leader of the Labour Party! The magic 150 points, and Roy did it for you at the end. You did very well, Roy. Neil, you enjoyed yourself? Yes, very of much, course. Well, you won't go away empty-handed because you'll take with you a stereo, radio, cassette, and 20 tapes. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Marjorie, Marjorie, you are this week's punchline champion, so come with me. Here we go. You know how we play our final game, don't you, Marjorie? A simple game, eight punchlines and eight answers. No red herrings, and the more correct answers you give me, the better your prize. Okay? If you manage to get seven out of eight correct, you will take away our punchline champion prize. Okay? Let's do it quickly, then you can get it into your mind. Punchliners, your punchlines, please. So Walter Scott. Michelangelo. Mozart. Amerigo Vespucci. Charles Dickens. Handel. Franz Hals. Christopher Columbus. Would you like to hear it one more time? Please. Of course. All right. So, Walter Scott. Michelangelo. Mozart. Amerigo Vespucci. Charles Dickens. Handel. Franz Hals. Christopher Columbus. All right? Yes. Just relax. Here we go. Who composed the magic flute? Number one. Number one. Rosemary. Mozart. Mozart is correct. Good stuff. <laughs> Who discovered Cuba? Number four. Number four. Amerigo Vespucci. Oh, what a shit. What's wrong, Mark? Never mind. Uh, you might get this right. America was named after which explorer? Oh. Number four. Number four. Amerigo well, that's Vespucci. Fine. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, two correct. Who painted the Laughing Cavalier? Number seven. Number seven, Patty. Franz Hall. Franz Hall. Right. <laughs> Three correct. You can still win our Punchline Champion Prize. Who painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel? Number six. Number six, Matthew. Michelangelo. Michelangelo. <laughs> Marjorie, who wrote Barnaby Rudge? Number five. Number five, Brian? Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens, indeed. <laughs> Who wrote Ivanhoe? Number three. Number three, Judy. Walter Scott. Yeah! <laughs> now, listen carefully to the question. Who composed Handel's water music? <laughs> Number two. Handel! Yeah! <laughs> you a bit of a struggle, but you came through in the end. There we go. You did terrific. We're very pleased for you. Marjorie, you will take back with you our first prize, which is a 27-inch colour TV with full remote control. Marvellous. <laughs> you haven't got one. Oh, this, this, this 
is, this is a very special remote control. It automatically switches off when Terry Wogan comes on. It is a shame. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to our winner tonight, to Marjorie, and a round of applause and congratulations to our runner-up, to Neil. And thank you and good night to the lovely Suzanne and to the immaculate Roy. And a thank you to my punchline pals, who this week were Rosemary. Bye. Jeff Stevenson. Good night, folks. Judy Gridley. Hello. Hogwell Flat. Ta. Brian Joan Elliott. Bye. Matthew Kelly. The, uh, Patty Gold. Hello. And Roger Pitter. Good night, everybody. Thank you for being with us, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you left with us. Join us again soon for some more punchlines. Good night. <laughs>